Time travel has become a common theme throughout Star Trek and the focus of countless episodes, both groundbreaking and unwatchable. We've already done a list counting down the 10 best time travel episodes in Trek, so here we're going to focus on the worst of the worst. Episodes filled with paradoxes, confusing timelines, pointless endings and all that fun timey-wimey stuff. A lot of the entries on this list have the potential to be much better and introduce some really cool concepts, but were either rushed or not well thought out. The problem with time travel is that it can give you a lot of power as a writer, but it's so easy to get lost in paradoxes that turn your script into a confusing mess. Keep in mind that while these are the worst in terms of time travel episodes, a few of the entries on this list are okay. They just don't compare to time travel classics like The Visitor and Cause and Effect. So with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with Trek Culture here with the 10 worst Star Trek time travel episodes. Number 10. Non Sequitur Voyager If you ever wondered what happened Harry Kim's life would have been like if he was never stranded in the Delta Quadrant with Voyager, then Non Sequitur is the episode for you. Somehow a transporter accident changed history so that Harry's friend Daniel Bird got the job on Voyager instead of him, which also caused Tom Paris to never end up aboard the ship because without Harry to come to his aid in the pilot episode Caretaker, Paris was arrested by Odo on Deep Space Nine for getting in a fight with Quark, losing him his temporary spot on Voyager's bridge. In the end, the whole episode was undone by by recreating the same transporter accident that changed history to begin with. This concept could have gone so much further. The temporal anomaly that caused all of this was barely explained, and we didn't even learn that much about Harry as a character other than seeing that he would have been much happier and actually able to have a normal relationship if he had just stayed on Earth. The one redeeming part was seeing how much Paris changed because of being on Voyager, with Non Sequitur bringing back his sarcastic, slightly annoyed demeanour from the pilot. Number 9. All Our Yesterdays, The Original Series the final chronological episode of the original series, Turnabout Intruder would be the last televised episode, All Our Yesterdays suffers from the age-old problem. Decent idea, poor execution. Issues that affected it include a lack of consistency with the rules of time travel as well as a noticeably lower budget. It is the only episode of the original series in which only McCoy, Spock and Kirk appear on screen of the main cast, Scotty appearing only as a voiceover. On the planet of Sapita, the Atavacron device allows users to travel through time. This is an issue, as the gang find themselves trapped in the past just as the nearby Beta Niobe star is about to go Nova. In the only time in Star Trek's history, this travel through time reverts some of the travellers to earlier stages of their species. Spock, for example, reverts to a savage and violent Vulcan, echoing the time before logic on his planet. McCoy, having travelled 5,000 years into the past, shows no change whatsoever, an attempt to show that humans have not evolved in all that time. There are some good ideas in this episode. The idea of showing an earlier version of Vulcan is certainly interesting, but there was simply no steam left in Star Trek by this penultimate episode of the final series. Everyone seemed ready to hang up their hats by then. There is one small piece of continuity that is important though. The Beta Niobe star that goes Nova at the episode's close is the same star that sets off the events of the animated series episode The Counterclock Incident. This entry, written by Fred Bronson, introduced Robert April to Star Trek, the first captain of the Enterprise, who recently appeared in Strange New Worlds, played by Adrian Holmes. Number 8. Magic to make the sanest man go mad. Discovery. The return of Harry Mudd in the Discovery episode Magic to Make the Sanest Man Go Mad was a fun one-off episode that worked good as an escape from all of the seriousness and drama of the first season, but it had its problems. Mudd somehow acquired a time crystal that allowed him to jump back and forth through time. He used this ability to nearly take control of Discovery, who were tricked into picking up an endangered space whale that he was hiding in. The setup was fun, but the episode itself got tedious after the second time jump. The B-plot about Burnham and Tyler's romance was also pretty unnatural. Overall, Harry Mudd was fun in this episode. The ending was pretty clever, and it was cool to see how Stamets perceived time differently after linking with the Spore Drive. But the repetition and pointless B-plots make this one of the worst time travel episodes. Number 7. Visionary Deep Space Nine 
So apparently in Star Trek, if you get hit with a certain type of radiation enough, you'll start to jump back and forth from the future. This is literally what happened to Miles O'Brien in the episode Visionary. And of course this happened at the most convenient time possible. O'Brien was able to prevent his own death, the destruction of Deep Space Nine, and the closing of the Bajoran wormhole at the hands of the Romulans. It was already unlikely enough that he'd get this time jump superpower, but giving it to him at literally the perfect moment just makes this story so unbelievable. Visionary tried way too hard to be an epic, action-packed thriller of an episode, but the whole time jumping idea falls apart the more you think about it and just ends up feeling kind of silly. The story could have been improved by explaining the source of the time jumps a little better or by lowering the stakes slightly to make it a bit more realistic. Number 6. We'll always have Paris, the next generation. The production of The Next Generation was hampered by a writer's strike while We'll Always Have Paris was being made, and unfortunately you can tell that the script was rushed. The story is pretty generic. A mad scientist conducting illegal experiments with time ended up creating a bunch of weird, trippy visual effects. There was also a lame B-plot about Picard's former lover Janice, who was now the wife of the crazy time scientist. The chemistry between the two of them left a lot to be desired, and their romance ended up feeling forced and unnatural. The romantic subplot in this episode basically just existed to fill time in between trippy time distortions. All in all, We'll Always Have Paris is a mid-tier Next Generation episode, with some okay special effects for the time, but nothing special from a narrative standpoint, and definitely one of the least inspired time travel related episodes. Number 5. Ascension – Deep Space Nine Benjamin Sisko was at first reluctant to accept his role as the emissary in the Bajoran religion. So when an ancient Bajoran poet who disappeared 200 years ago emerged from the wormhole and declared himself the emissary, Sisko didn't interfere at first. The visitor from the past, Akoram Lan, started to to enact a bunch of outdated and discriminatory laws for the Bajoran people, which eventually made Sisko decide to challenge him for the title of emissary by flying into the wormhole and consulting with the Prophets. It turned out that the Prophets orchestrated this whole thing by sending a quorum to the future simply to prove to the Bajoran people that Sisko was the emissary. A session was cool because it showed off the non-linear way that the Prophets think, but most Bajorans were already convinced that Sisko was the emissary by this point, so the Prophets were pretty much just solving a problem that they created. Number 4. Shattered Voyager Shattered gave us one of the most ridiculous temporal anomalies we've ever seen in Trek, one that shifted different parts of Voyager into separate time periods that only Chakotay was able to pass through. The plot revolved around Chakotay trying to gain the trust of the past version of Captain Janeway, while avoiding the Kazon, the Borg, the Macrovirus, and plenty more of the most iconic villains from the series. Now it is possible for something to be a lot of fun, but still lazy, which is definitely the case with this episode. It was really cool to revisit some of the classic classic episodes from the past, especially since Shattered came midway through the seventh season, right when Voyager was wrapping up, but the script is beyond far-fetched. Not only was the ship split into all these different time periods inexplicably, but they also just happened to be during some of the most pivotal moments of the series. On the bridge, it was the pilot episode Caretaker. In engineering, it was during the Kazon takeover of the ship from Basics. In the holodeck, it was during the war between the holograms and the photonic lifeforms from Bride of Chaotica. And in Cargo Bay 2, it was midway through Scorpion after the Borg boarded the ship. Despite it being far more likely that each random time period would be just a normal, peaceful day, they all just happened to be the craziest, most eventful moments in the series, clearly just so they could get the nostalgia points. Number 3. Fury Voyager Kess literally left Voyager with a bang in the gift, launching the ship thousands of light years through space far outside of Borg space. Ever since, fans were hoping she would return to show off more of her newly learned psychic abilities. When she finally did return to Voyager in the episode Fury, the writers took her character in a radically different direction. Kess became enraged at Janeway and the crew for leaving her alone in space too soon. She barged aboard the ship, killed Balana, and extracted power from the warp core to travel back in time and convince her younger self to leave the Voyager crew behind and return to Akumpa. After Janeway was forced to kill the older Kess, the younger one recorded a message for her future self. When Kess returned again years later, simply watching this message of her younger self telling her to take a chill 
chill pill was enough to calm her murderous rage. The episode really failed to give Kes a satisfying conclusion and has too many logical paradoxes in it to count. But worst of all, like most awful time travel episodes, all of the negative consequences of Fury were undone in the end, and Kes took off on her own again, setting course for a comper. Number 2. Firstborn, The Next Generation Now, here's a hypothetical question for you. If your father was assassinated and you could travel back in time to prevent it, would you simply go back and warn him, or would you disguise yourself as a family friend to convince your younger self to become a skilled warrior so that you could eventually have the slight chance of saving him from his attackers. Well, in the episode First Born, Alexander Rizhenko, Worf's son, met a mysterious Klingon named Kemtar, who began aggressively trying to force Alexander into the warrior life. Eventually, Kemtar was revealed to be Alexander from the future. Indeed, he thought it was smarter to trick himself into becoming a warrior sooner, in the hopes that he could one day prevent his father's death, instead of just telling him about the future assassination up front. The only apparent benefit of disguising himself was to stage a fake assassination attempt on Worf and his younger self, which he used as a way to get them to realise the threats they faced and to frame the House of Duras. Still though, even if he wanted himself to follow the warrior path sooner, he could have just told them that and saved himself a lot of unnecessary drama. Number 1. Time's Orphan, Deep Space Nine one of the worst tropes of time travel episodes in Trek is when they press the reset button in the end and somehow make it so the events of the episode never actually happened. This was a serious problem with the iconic Voyager episode Year of Hell, but at least that one was well written enough to make up for it. The same cannot be said for Time's Orphan. In the episode, Keiko and Miles O'Brien's daughter Molly was accidentally sent back in time on an alien world. When the crew was finally able to bring her back to the present using the same tech that took her, she appeared as an 18-year-old year old, 10 years older than she had been before. Apparently the device malfunctioned somehow and locked onto her 10 years after her arrival. When she returned she had lost most of her social and communication skills and was openly hostile to people. The only time she would calm down was when revisiting the planet in the holosuite. Now, this would have been an amazingly deep and dark direction to take Molly's character, but unfortunately it wasn't long at all before a solution was found to get the younger Molly back, and then the whole episode devolved into a debate on whether they should raise the older Molly's life from history to bring her younger self back to the present, which is eventually what ended up happening, though not exactly the way they planned it. This episode took what could have been an intense and beautiful story of surviving hardship and readjusting to society and made it completely pointless. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed any, then do let us know in the comments below and while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also head over to Twitter and follow us there at Trek Culture, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with Trek Culture. I hope you have a wonderful day and remember to boldly go where no one has gone before.